Let's take a look at problem two and think through how to problem solve for this. In this particular problem, if you've got your book open, that would be helpful. Page 144, problem two. And the narrative gives us this adjusted trial balance, excuse me, unadjusted trial balance, and then we have the adjusted trial balance. And really, we're just to look to at, you know, what's the difference in all these dollar amounts, because the difference is going to be our adjusting journal entries. So it's fairly straightforward, except it does make us think about the cause and effect. You know, if a company gives up something, what is, is it that they're taking away? Because we know every transaction is a, you know, we will give up something and take something from the company's perspective. So, we have, so it does, will help us think through what's the give and take exchange for all of these. So cash, we can see, didn't change. Let me get my pen on here. There we go. But accounts receivable did. Accounts receivable went from 20,000, whoop, here we go, 20,000 to 23,500. So we can see there was an overall increase of $3,500 for accounts receivable. Well, that would be adjusting journal entry A. Oh, let me clean that up a little bit. Sorry about that. Let's make that look a little tidier. Okay, so that's our debit, $3,500 and we'll make that adjusting journal entry A. So we can see accounts receivable went up. Well, now we have to think, well, what would cause it to go up? Well, where's accounts receivable coming from? Accounts receivable comes from our customers. Why would our customers give us accounts receivable? What are we giving them in exchange? Well, we give them goods and services. If we give up goods and services, what is that? Well, that's the basic definition of revenue. So we provide goods and services, that's revenue. So adjusting journal entry A is a debit to accounts receivable and a credit to service revenue. Let's go to the next line item, supplies. It went from $8,400 to $3,000. Well, that's a decrease of $5,400. So supplies must have been credited in the adjustment process by $5,400. Well, what causes supplies to go down? Well, supplies goes down because we use it, right? So if we use something, supplies, that's an expense. So that would be a debit to supplies expense, and then a credit to supplies. And we can see we ended up with $5,400 of supplies expense. We did need that debit. And let's review just here for just a second. Let's review in accounting how to record cost. In accounting, there's two ways an accountant will record cost. One is that we can record cost as an asset, the other option is to record the cost as an expense. Well, what's the difference between an asset and an expense? Well, assets are costs that we haven't consumed yet, or we haven't fully consumed yet. Or as expenses are costs we have consumed, or we have used those costs, past tense. So expenses are costs that have been consumed, past tense. Assets are costs that will be consumed in the future. So the basic difference in those two. All right, let's get back to our problem. Prepaid insurance went from 3350 3, down to 2500. Well, so it went down $850. So there had to have been a credit to that account for 850. Well, this is very similar to the supplies, right? Cuz what causes the asset to go down? The asset's going down, kind of dot 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 because we're moving that cost to the expense. So let's go down um, to insurance expense if I could find it, and put our debit in there for 850. So we can see adjusting journal entry C was a debit to insurance expense and a credit to prepaid insurance. I'm going to stop here for just a little bit. The problem actually wants us to journalize this. Uh, I'm really just going to solve for how to, how to problem solve, but let's go back to entry A. What is it that you're actually going to be putting in Wally Plus for your solution? When you go to Wiley Plus, you're actually going to make a journal entry debiting accounts receivable to increase it, right, 3500 and you're going to credit service revenue, abbreviate it, service revenue, REV for revenue, and you're going to increase it 3500 So when you actually put this in Wally Plus, it won't be in, obviously, in the spreadsheet format. You're going to make the journal entry. The spreadsheet just helps us problem solve, and that's much of what I want the videos to be about. How do you set something up to problem solve in intermediate accounting? 
Well, let's move on. Keep going. Equipment didn't change. It stayed at 60. Accumulated depreciation, though, went from 28 to 33,000. So it had an increase of $5,000. Well, why does accumulated depreciation go up? Well, it's really just like B and C. Accumulated depreciation is connected to equipment. Uh, instead of directly reducing equipment and taking those numbers out of equipment and moving it to expense, we do it indirectly through the accumulated depreciation account. But the outcome's the same. We're going to have an expense because we have used the equipment, and if we use equipment, that's depreciation expense. So we're going to debit depreciation expense, credit our accumulated depreciation, 5000 Accounts payable, no change. Interest payable went up 150 That would be a credit. So transaction E, interest payable went up 150 Well, why, do, why does it go up? Well, it goes up because we owe money. Well, why do we owe money? Well, we owe money because we incurred a cost, right? Interest expense. So we go down here and record the other half, or solve for the other half of that adjusting journal entry. So we have a debit to interest expense and a credit to interest payable. We owe interest because we incurred interest. If we've incurred it, we've used it. That's an expense. Nothing happened to note payable, going back to the top. Unearned revenue actually went down, 1400 If it went down, that's a debit. Well, why would unearned revenue go down? Well, first off, let's think about, well, what created unearned revenue? Unearned revenue is created when the customer gives us cash. The customer gives us cash, but we don't give them goods and services yet, right? Instead of giving them goods and services, we promise to give them goods and services. That promise is represented in the unearned service revenue account. So again, we get cash and we promise to pay later, or we promise to provide the goods and services later. So we will um, uh, fulfill our liability at a later date. So if we fulfill our liability and it goes down, what did we do? Well, we must have provided the goods and services. That's revenue. So again, unearned service revenue goes down because we earn the revenue by providing goods and services. So I have a debit to unearned revenue and a credit to service revenue. And I think the last one is here, salaries and wages payable. It went up. That's a credit of $1,300. Well, why do we owe wages? We owe wages because our employees worked and we consumed their services. If we consumed their services, that's an expense. So transaction G, debit, salary and wage expense, credit, salary and wages payable. Okay, so that fulfills part A. And we, if, we, if I did this on Excel, you know, I would sum all of this. I'll go ahead and do that just so you can see the total. That's 17,600. And if I add up all the credits, I also will get 17,600. It's a comma there. That's not a two, it's 17600. So my debits and credits are in balance. Part two of this assignment asks us to write out the financial statements. Well, we're going to prepare the financial statements. Those are prepared from our adjusted trial balance. So we write them out from these columns. Well, and now there actually is a particular sequence to write out the financial statements. Recall, the very first financial statement we write out is the income statement, where we list all the revenues and expenses. So we're going to take revenue and subtract all these expense accounts. So let me pull up that solution and we'll take a quick peek at that to see what it looks like. I'm not going to write it out just because of time. Okay, so here's the solution to problem two. If you want to see what the actual journal entries look like, that's what the adjustments would look like in the journal. Here's the income statement. Let's take a peek at it a little bit, talk about it a little bit. The heading, just a reminder, the income statement covers a period of time, so we have to state, is it a week, is it a month, is it a year, and also, when does that time period end? In this case, it was December 31st, but you know, a lot of companies have different year ends. Their fiscal year does not coincide with the calendar year, so it might be you know, February 28th. We can see that um, we list out revenue, list all our expenses, total it, and we get net income. Second financial statement, let's go back to our spreadsheet. The second financial statement is going to be the statement of retained earnings. 
And that's because we take net income and move it to retained earnings. So let's take a peek and see what that looks like. Okay, so here's our statement of retained earnings. Again, the heading title is fairly important, especially the date. It covers a period of time. We have to say when that period of time ends. We start with our beginning balance and then net income, our net earnings, increase our retained earnings. And by the way, just so I want to point it out, recall we've got one financial statement number moving in to the next. So we take this net income number and we're going to move it forward to the statement in retained earnings. So again, we've got that coming in. This net income number is coming in from our statement of retained earnings. So net income, 36450 Okay, and then we get an updated retained earnings balance. And lastly, the last financial statement we write out is a balance sheet. Just put it BS. So we're going to list all the assets, all the liabilities, and then stockholders' equity. So let's take a peek at it. Recall the balance sheet has a different date. It's at a point in time. Uh, we hear uh, the solutions listed out all the assets. Please note, long-term physical assets will have two lines for them. We have the original cost of 60000 So the company originally paid 60000 for this equipment. They have used up 33000 of that cost for a net $27,000. You may recall there's an accounting term for that. That $27,000 is called referred to as book value. So the, the called book value, that's just an old term because the accounting records used to actually be physical books. So it represents the accounting value, the accounting book value. Then we list liabilities, add those up. Stockholders equity, let me point out, when we get this updated retained earnings balance, that's going to go into our balance sheet. So we had net income coming in from the income statement to statement of changes in retained earnings, and then we update our retained earnings at the year end and move that forward to the balance sheet. Okay, so that's part A and B. Last part on this question uh, is part C, and it asks us a couple of questions. One has to do about uh, the notes payable, and it wants us to figure out What's the annual interest rate for the note? Well, let's go take a peek at this note. The note has a principal amount of $5,000. Now, the other thing we know about that particular $5,000 is that we accrued interest on it for $150. So we've got a note with a principal amount of $5,000, and we know um, that we accrued interest on that, on that particular $5,000 for $150. Let me point out, this $350 of interest expense might have been for that $5,000, but it also might have been for another note that got paid off. And of course, then, if that note was paid off, it's not a part of this $5,000. So the only thing I know truly relevant to this $5,000 note is that we accrued $150 interest uh, for it at the end of the year. Okay, so let's set up. Well, what do we know about interest? Well, we know the formula, so let's write out. So let's problem solve by putting that down and writing out our mathematical formula for interest, which is principal equals rate times time. So we know our mathematical model. Now all we're going to do is plug into that formula what we know. Well, we know the principal of the note is $5,000, so that's, that's, what, that's what's in the note payable. But we don't know the interest rate. We also know, because it just tells us in the narrative for problem one, it tells us that we had accrued three months interest. Well, that's three months out of 12 months. Keep in mind, interest rates are always, just about always, stated as an APR, annual percentage rate. So if the interest rate is annually, then we always state time in terms of a year as well. That's why I'm taking three out of 12 months. Uh, we also know that interest expense was $150 according to our trial balance. So I just merely, you know, now solve for that. 5,000 times 3 twelfths is 1,250. 1, 
and then we just divide each side by 1250. The line drawn there, that's going to cancel out and we get our interest rate to equal roughly 12 percent. Fun stuff, isn't it? So just kind of problem solving on uh, figuring some more detail out. Okay, the second one has to do with wages payable. So let's go take a peek at, you know, what kind of information do we know about wages payable? Well, we know at the end of the year that there was $1,300 that we owed for wages. We also know that for the whole year, the expense for wages and salaries was $11,300. Okay, so let's go put this and see if we can solve for what uh, the problem is asking. Let me read it for us. It says if the company paid $12,500 in salaries and wages in 2014, what was the balance in the payable account at December 31st, 2013? Meaning, what was the beginning balance? So now we have to think, well, what would help us solve for this? Well, this is where T accounts are very helpful for accountants when we're just problem solving. So we know that um, salary and wages payable is a liability. So it goes up with credits. I'm going to just abbreviate payable, P-A-Y. So we know, like all accounts, there's a beginning balance. There's going to be something that causes it to go up. There are, probably, there are injuries that can cause it to go down. And then we have our ending balance. So the trial balance told us that the ending balance was 1300 And by the way, what we want to solve for is what was this beginning balance? So let's fill in, well, what else do we know? Well, we know that the salary and wage expense was 11300 Well, that causes the payable to go up. So the salary and wage expense item would cause the payable to go up, and then, of course, later we pay our employees. But we would have debited salary and wage expense and then credit this payable originally, and then there would have been a second entry to pay off the liability. Well... Let's look at that second entry. It tells us in the narrative, again in this problem, that we paid $12,500. Well, all payable accounts, all liability accounts that are payable go down because cash is paid. So in this case, the liability went up because we incurred the expense and we owe money, and then it goes down because we paid cash. Okay, so now you can see we know three or four items. If we know three or four numbers, then we can just solve for the unknown. So what plus 11,300 minus this 12,500 equals $1,300, 2,500. Okay, so that solves for problem two.